250 now, 500 dollar bid now, two and but they get 250 now, 500 now, 750 dollar bid now, thousand now, 250 now, two. Good morning. Good morning and live from Lincoln Center at the uh, intersection of the North Dallas Tollway and the LBJ Freeway. I am honored and excited to have a friend from a long time uh, back, and that would be the great American actor, Burton Gilliam. Good morning, Burton. I'm so proud to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, we've been trying to get this thing scheduled for a while. We have been talking about it for a while. That's and, right. And we're live, so you know we've got folks. There'll be there'll be folks tuning in from all over the world. We, we we're pretty, all over the world. Oh, absolutely. Decatur, Texas. <laughs> uh, Italy, Texas. Do you, Rome, do you go Texas. Clean, but you don't go to Mule Shoe, right? Uh, only on Thursdays. Only Thursdays. <laughs> So, uh, well, anyway, we get, we'll get to the point of, of why we're having you here today. You know, you have been uh, an actor for a long time, and a lot of people don't know uh, where you are from, where, you know, your history. And, of course, most, most everyone knows you from Blazing Saddles. That's, that's your, that is your big, big breakout part. I've done a lot of big pictures, but nothing will replace Blazing Saddles. I, well, you yeah. know, there's, there's worse situations. So <laughs> I, I'm just going to ask you a few questions, and, and I know that you are a, an alum of uh, Woodrow Wilson High School. Woodrow Wilson High School. Woodrow Wilson, oh Woodrow Wilson, Woodrow. Well, I won't sing the whole fight yeah, song. I think but. that was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, tell me a little bit about your, your background. I, uh, go back to, uh, you know, growing up in Dallas, and, and I know you, uh, you have, a, you have a, a, a history with the fire department and a lot of stuff like that. Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I did go to Woodrow Wilson High School, went to J.L. Long, and went to O.M. Roberts grade school. Uh, I've, uh, uh, I'm a Dallas guy. I did my 23 years in Hollywood, but I'm a Dallas guy. And uh, I'm I'm actually a Fair Park guy. Are you? I'm one of the very few people that ever lived inside the confines of Fair Park. Did you just get um, you couldn't figure out how to get out of there? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they had this big eight foot fence around our house. That's about, back in, when I was about three years old for about a year and a half. My father was. Well, this is back during World War Two. My father was a uh, a night watchman at uh, at Fair Park, and they had a house for us. And it was the only house is back on back where the uh, uh, parking lot is off of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. One house there, two bedroom, little shack that was about to fall down, you know. But that's where we lived, and it was surrounded by an eight foot fence. We, if my father was not at home at the time we couldn't get out uh, <laughs> my mother would call down to the grocery store and get to get a loaf of bread or something and they'd come down and throw it over the fence to us that is crazy uh, uh, so, well i can i don't know if we can top that <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I lived at go. fair park <clears throat> well you're not living there now no I don't live there now uh, <laughs> i know uh you've had some great parts uh we want to talk a little bit about hollywood while we can um you you who would you say is the most famous person you've worked with burt reynolds really yeah you have yeah. any story about that oh yeah oh i got a lot. that you that you can actually oh, tell this is, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about burt reynolds folks <laughs> yeah yeah let me tell you a dear story about him or uh, burt is, is always good to everybody around him he's just everybody loves him but burt was always about half an inch from going off mm -hmm. um, because he was always so involved with everything that, you know, producing and directing and acting, and, and he was just always on edge. But everybody loved it. Okay, five weeks before he, uh, before he died, mm -hmm. and he died, what, six weeks ago, something like that, five weeks before he died, he sent me, and I hadn't seen him in about, three years or talked to him in about three years he sent me a video just uh, and he was sitting in a chair had a cane there and he just he he did not look good this is five weeks before he dies 
He said, I just wanted to get a hold of you and, and tell you that I love you. And uh, I'm so proud, he, he said to me, I'm so proud that you made the name Burton work for you because I couldn't make it for me because his name was Burton mm -hmm. also. He's Burton Leon, I'm Burton Lee. So I always called him Leon, he called me Lee. Mm -hmm. But he said, just, just sent me this video which I will keep forever. Sure. To, uh, to tell me he loved me. I think that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. special. That's pretty special. <clears throat> well, I think you probably knew kind of how things were going. Yeah. And, I think and so he was too. just kind of telling you goodbye. He, I was probably on a list of 4,000, but, <laughs> but I'm glad <laughs> hey, to have been on that list. It's kind of like your recent birthday party, which I'm still waiting for the invitation. <laughs> 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 it's coming. It's, it's coming. I'm, I'm going to send you a video. <laughs> so <clears throat> you had a pretty uh, historic birthday lately. Did yes. Uh, uh, tell about it a little my, bit. My my birthday is August 9th, 1938, which means I'm 80 years young, mm -hmm. and my birthday lasted for about eight or ten days anyway. It just people would take me to dinner to take and me and my wife. Uh, to lunch and different things, but uh, about two weeks ago, 12 days ago, my wife threw me a, a surprise birthday party, and six weeks after my birthday, is that is a surprise, boy. Well, <laughs> it better worked. late than never. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, it was wonderful. 150 people from every era of my life and all the uh, all the different things I've done I, was, I saw people hadn't seen in 60 years wow. it was wonderful she did a great job thank you Susie there you go I, and uh, I understand you you even heard from Mel Brooks I did hear from Mel Brooks of course every every 10 years he always sends me something yeah uh, on 60 70 and 80 he has sent me something every year you know uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. He's he's pretty much the guy. He's the guy. He's For the guy. For me, he's been the guy. So tell me, uh, tell us a little bit about working in Blazing Saddles. Let's go back to that just a little bit. I had done, uh, the, in 1972, I got a chance to be in a picture called Paper Moon, which was a big picture. It was nominated for Best Picture of the Year. Uh, won a couple of Academy Awards. Uh, Didn't Tatum, Tatum O'Neill? Tatum O'Neill won the Academy Award at Amazing. nine years old. Wow. Yeah. Oh, anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, oh. it just, I'm having flashbacks. Oh. I have a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> Some have nothing to do with paper moon. <laughs> well, you don't have 80 years of it, though. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not the years, it's the miles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's pretty good. I'm going to remember that. That's true. Uh, where were we? Uh, we were talking about the, the paper moon, paper moon. and uh, oh, and, and blazing saddles. Mm -hmm. I had done this little picture called Paper Moon while I was a fireman in Dallas. This is uh, that was in November of 1972. Uh, went back to the fire station. Never thought I'd do anything else. I thought, well, it's fun time. Had a great part. Did did, a, did it was fun. Uh, and then three months later in February. I got a phone call at the fire station, and when, you, it, when you're at the fire station, you answer the phone, you say, Fire Station 39, Burton Gilliam speaking, and, <laughs> and this guy says, uh, Hi, my name's Mel Brooks. I'm a writer, director, producer, actor, and I'm getting ready to do a big picture, and I want you to be a part of it. I said, Thank you, Mr. Brooks, and I hung <laughs> up. I just hung up the phone because I knew it was another fireman calling me, giving me a bad time, you know. Well, <laughs> luckily for me, he called back in about 10 minutes and, and talked to my captain, and I was outside. My captain poked his head out the window door, and he said, uh, some guy on the phone here called named Mel Brooks. Uh, do you know him? I said, no, but he said, well, he's in, he's in movies, and, and he wants to talk to you. I said, oh, okay, so I go talk to him. And he tells me who he is, and then I believe him, you know. And he says, uh, I want you to be in my picture. I saw a rough cut of Paper Moon last night and uh, talked to Peter Bogdanovich, the director, about you, and he said, hire you. 
And I said, well, I'd like to, but I don't have any vacation time coming. I've used it all up. <laughs> he thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired of, I can't get off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he said, uh, well, he convinced me to come out and talk to him. And I thought I was just going to get a little free ride out to first class out to, to see him. So I go in this, cutting it to the chase, I go in this big conference room and there's 10 or 12 people behind a desk. I recognize one person there and that was uh, Richard Pryor, who was one of our writers. Uh, but Mel Brooks jumped up and jumped over the table and ran up and pinned me against the wall. He weighed about 120 pounds. Then he said, this is the guy we want right here, right here. He's telling this to his, all these other people. Anyway, we talk, and, and uh, he gives me a script, said, come back and see me tomorrow. I go back and see him and Richard the next day. And I said, well, there's really nothing in this picture. I had a lot to do in, in Paper Moon. There's nothing to do. And they said, well, that's what we got. I got on a plane, went back to Dallas. Then uh, about a week later, I'm sitting around home, and and phone rings, and this guy, I say, hello. And this guy says, hey, man, is it Richard? Richard who? He said, <laughs> Richard Pryor, man. <laughs> and folks, when I tell this story, every time, and I've told it, oh, I'm about up to three million now. <laughs> uh, I get a little goosebumpy, you yeah, know? Yeah. Because I can hear his voice, right? He said, we really want you to do this picture and want you to come back and talk to us again uh, because we've rewritten your part, and it's really, you open the picture and you tell how crazy it's going to be. You're not going to tell where it's going, but you're going to tell tell people how crazy it is. I, I said, y'all going to pay for it first class. <laughs> I go back again, and I tell them, okay, I read it. I tell them, okay, I'll do it, but I can't do it for what I did on Paper Moon, which was scale, which mm -hmm. was $282 for the week. I said, I have to quit the fire department. So uh, I they send me around to see the casting department, and, and they, we can't get together on money. They don't even talk about it. They say, There's no money in this picture. So next day, I go I go home. Next day, Mel Brooks called me and said, what happened? I said, y'all don't have any money. He said, I'll call you back. Called me back and said, when can you come back and see me again? Mm -hmm. I said, well, it's, I've taken off from the fire department here twice, and it's going to be a while. He said, well, we got six weeks. I said, well, it'll probably be about 10 days. And he said, call me when you can come, and We'll get it all set up for you. I go back to see him, sit down in front of him. We talk for a minute. And he says, how much is it going to take for us to get you to do this part? I thought, man, I'm going to shoot the moon here. I'm really <laughs> going to go for it. This is early 1973. Yep. I said, well, you know, at the fire department, I, I make $12,000 a year. I know that impressed him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's his laundry bill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I, I said that I couldn't do the picture for any less than I make in a whole year. And he said, uh, "Well, we're giving you three weeks on the picture, uh, four thousand dollars a week. That's fine." <laughs> uh, Mike, how much did I leave on the table? There's no telling. <laughs> no telling, you know. Yeah. But as it turned out, I had four and a half weeks, and with overtime, made twenty five thousand dollars. Sweet, two uh, years pay. Two years pay, exactly right. That'll get you hooked. That was a hook. So, <clears throat> I, most people have seen Blazing Saddles, but yeah. and I will tell you, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> you have to see it. I, pro <laughs> yeah. I bet I've seen Blazing Saddles. 50 times mm -hmm. and if it comes on you can't it's one of those movies you're gonna you, watch part of you're it, gonna yeah. watch yeah. you're gonna stop yeah um who did you enjoy the most working with on the sh on that picture well i uh alex karras and i lived together i spent i did the first two days at the universal sheridan he said hey you drove your car out here i don't have a car but i've got a two-bedroom apartment over here that someone gave him every time he came to los angeles he, mm -hmm. and he said why don't you come over and stay with me it won't cost you anything and we'll have the car and i said oh boy that's great alex was great you know he, he was bongo Fam famous detroit lion yeah he, oh yeah and you know he had done about a year and a half before that he'd done mm -hmm. uh paper lion yeah. About the, oh, yeah, about I remember the, that with and Plimpton. It, it made him a, a George Plimpton. Yeah, yeah. George Plimpton. Yeah. So, anyway, I uh, uh, 
Alex and I were great friends, but Slim Pickens and I became tight, inseparable. Yeah, we were just well. You're kind of cut tight. from the same cloth. Uh, uh, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. uh, Slim said you just kind of follow me and watch kind of what I do because it's worked for me, and you just do what I do. And so <laughs> I did. And and Slim never said could say the same line twice. Right. And he always said something different and that's and i did that a little of that too but uh he was his whole family and i we and my wife we we became great friends that's uh, cool and when uh when he passed away about 26 five years ago i was only one of two actors that was invited to his memorial service up in columbia california wow yeah Wow. Did you ever actually live in California? Did you? 23 years. No kidding. Yeah. So yeah. took I was there 23 years. Took me 21 of those to figure out how to get out. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, town did you live in? Uh, we lived in Studio City. We lived in uh, Hollywood. We lived in Burbank. Mm-hmm. Uh, you drank the Kool-Aid. I drank the Kool-Aid. You got that right. You're not in Dallas anymore. I, I, was, <laughs> I was. We were real close to uh, NBC, and mm-hmm. we used to go down. You know, Johnny Carson became sure. a great friend. And, oh, that's cool. And they, he'd just say, "Anytime you want to come back, come on, come on down." And and they had, they would give us what they call taped seats. You know, right there on the front. Tape, do not uh, sit here. Mm. Bert Gilliam, go sit here. <laughs> sweet, sweet. I used to love those shows. And, you know, we actually lived, what, what year did you move out there? 1973. 73. 73. Yeah. Yeah. We, we moved to uh, Orange County in 68, and we were there until about 73. Oh. And we'd had enough. <laughs> uh, did you? Okay. Yeah. So we were in Southern uh, California, then we went to Northern California. What, what city did you live in? We were in Brea. In Brea. Yeah. yeah. Which Brea at that time. I was there when they built the first McDonald's, and and let me that oh. you knew you were on the map when you had a McDonald's. You bet. Yeah. But there was, we lived on Imperial Highway, oh. and there was nothing between there and the city except Orange oh. Groves. There was an A and W root beer stand, and a, 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 a department store called Zodi's. Zodi's, yeah, sure. And, Zodi. and then there was nothing until you got to La Habra, Golly. literally. And you know they had the big theater, uh, yeah. the the drive-in. Golly. And that's when we when we got to California. I re- remember very well going to the the drive-in like the first week we were out there because you know you're you think you're in Hollywood. <laughs> you're not. You're, you're not. not. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not. You are in the orange groves back then. We were. There's not an orange grove there. And no. I remember the first move. It was a it was a, a two movie deal. You know, and it was uh, it was the the Wild Bunch and Kelly's Brando. Heroes. Brando and uh, your man, and you remember in that one, you know, you had Ben Johnson was in it. All yeah, those guys, yeah, man, that's back when and Peck and Paul did that one. Uh, oh gosh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I never got to work with Peck and Paul. Met him, but I didn't I'm surprised work. at that. Uh, actually, uh, I'm surprised at that. Oh boy. So, uh, give for the sake of the viewers who don't know you as well as I do, tell us a few other roles that would stand out. Some movies that you've been in. Some people you worked with. Honeymoon in Vegas was. R- really big. Uh, I'm the Flying Elvis Utah chapter. <laughs> uh, Fletch was huge. It's yeah. uh, uh, Chevy, Chase. Chevy Chase's favorite picture he ever did, and I do some really crazy stuff in that thing. And uh, uh, Back to the Future Three and The Getaway. And, well, there's 52 of them. Is that right? Yeah, 52 yeah. films. Uh, I've done a Probably uh, 15 that were really, really big. Big movies. Uh, you may have missed Soccer Dog. Did, did you? Did you uh, or or, or I, I did you go see it three or four I times? I don't know that I, <laughs> I must have missed that one. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was probably watching the Kelly's Heroes again. <laughs> you know, when you do a picture, I don't care if it's a little picture, big picture, the, the casting people and the director – will always say, oh, this is going to be a big picture. It's going to be a little picture, but it's going to make a lot of money, and it's going to make a lot of noise. Mm. Soccer dog? <laughs> <laughs> can we? Can you even find soccer dog? Uh, uh, I, I do have a copy of it. <laughs> well, you, you're the one. <laughs> I'm the one. <laughs> so who, who was in soccer dog? Uh, um, 
a guy named Ernest something you know, was the star of it. Said nobody, there really? were nobodies. Uh, a lot of people that they thought were were gonna really hit it. This was gonna know, be their but breakout never did, role. Never did happen. <laughs> uh, Soccer dog. Soccer dog. You'll love it. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> I'll have to call my assistant and get one, <laughs> get it pulled up. Um, so you went out. You lived out there for about twenty three years. Yeah. And, yeah. and, then and I met my wife there, actually, you know, after I'd been there about uh, almost a year. And I right after I moved out, I moved out in June of 73, and I met, do you remember Robbie Benson? Mm-hmm. Sure, uh, sure. I remember uh, that, what was that movie? What was his big basketball uh, movie? Uh, you and yeah, I, it you was and I, his. I was, I was actually. He, he I, wrote it. Yeah. Oh, did he? I, I was actually going to North Texas at that time, and I remember going to the movie and seeing that movie. He wrote it while he was living with me. He, I met him uh, doing a, a pilot up in uh, San Francisco in 73 and met his parents. And, and they said, well, Robbie's going to be graduating from, from high school this summer. Could he come out and stay with you for a while? Wow. Uh, here I was, 34 years old. And I got this kid living with me, 33 years old. And, and he was just... Uh, the nicest kid, good kid, who was going at that time with Glennis O'Connor, who was a girl that was about to make a move, and she did make a, she was a pretty good little star for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Robbie lived with me for about six months, and nearly, and I loved him, but he d- drove me crazy. He was on the phone all the time. Uh, Glennis lived about three quarters of a mile from us, they could just say, hey, why don't I meet you down at uh, McDonald's, and uh, or not McDonald's, uh, Bur- not Burger, what's the other one? The uh, In-N-Out? Uh, no, uh, golly. The first one ever was in Burbank, California. Oh, really? Uh, what? It was like Big Boy or something? Big Boy. Bob's Big Boy. Yep. I said, why don't y'all just meet at Bob's Big Boy and, do you, and talk you, Do you realize hours? that you and I were probably just a handful of people here <laughs> that, that know anything about Bob's Big Boy? Yeah. I just love their little guy standing out holding a hamburger. That's right. <laughs> and, the, and there's one, that, you know, right there near Hollywood, right, yeah. right there on the freeway. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's where everybody stopped. That's a, yeah. They filmed, oh, some quite, they filmed quite a few oh, things there. Oh, they did. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. Well. Um, so Big Boy was where they meet. It was, it, was, it was great. And I remember hearing, that, you know, they were Kip's. Big Kips. boy here, yep. mm-hmm. uh, but you could go in and, and get a, a hamburger and fries and a drink for eighty five cents. Mm-hmm. Of course, that was back in the late sixties. Sure, <laughs> sure. Oh, I remember. Uh, yeah. I remember. Um, you know, in, back where we were living in Brea, it was. You know, there was nothing there. I mean, literally. What the weird thing about Brea? If you go there now, it's like. Plano, Frisco, yeah, just right. huge. Everything, everything's a monster. They've yeah. got freeways going it's just everywhere. Miles and miles of homes. Yeah, and uh, it looks like strip North, malls. North Dallas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, in fact, when I fly in now over North Texas, you know, it's don't you find that amazing? Oh gosh, yeah. because you know when I moved to Dallas, the the tollway ended here in front of this building, oh, and it was a street. Uh-huh. And my first residence was about well, it was across from where Lowry's is now. Oh, which was the rusty pelican back then and really? you could walk across oh, the street and uh-huh. you know all the car dealerships used to be right here people sure. forget that we had yeah. ewing buick and all those things um, parkway pontiac all that was right here now now they're all gone and yeah. it's amazing to me how uh disposable buildings and mm. and everything they is. became yeah yeah they were gone they're gone and and it's uh i haven't been in this building right here in about 20 years and uh and this building is probably 25 years old something probably like that, older maybe more. probably longer yeah. yeah that's what's amazing now is as you know uh, by becoming younger all the time <laughs> <laughs> it's these the buildings i remember when they built them and now it's like well that building's been there 35 years I'm going, <laughs> yeah really? nice. do, you, do you know where the meadows building is sure. over sure that when you got out of downtown, that was that was the tall building, and it was probably eight stories on or central, something. On and it's, I guess it's still there, but it's surrounded by. Well, you know that's others. where the Cowboys headquarters sure. was. Uh, right, right there. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I, you just drive by. by it's, isn't it weird how you have a feeling you, when you drive by something like 
the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, it was that was a big deal. Everybody knew that's for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh-huh. Now look they're, at the Dallas yeah. Cowboys. Yeah. yeah, they're like a city. <laughs> that's right. It's yeah. crazy. So um, you've been doing a lot of spokesman uh, work. You've yep. worked with a lot of uh, dealerships and things of that nature. In fact, when the National Auctioneers Association came to uh, Dallas – uh, or Addison and Dallas about three years ago, um, I, I had you come out and you uh, represented yourself uh, quite well and and worked with the crowd and and they loved having you there. You know, I don't know how many pictures you took that night, okay. but but you uh, you know I highly recommend anyone that is looking for someone a celebrity uh, they can come out and interact well with um, their clientele whether you're a corporate. Uh, uh, a business, uh, if you've got uh, some type of a conference going on and you want some entertainment, n- nobody's better than you because well, you've got that personality. I, I mean, you're, you know, <clears throat> I got hired to go to New York, I don't know, this has been 35 years ago probably, to, to uh, work for a, a real estate auction company in uh, Hop Hog, New York. On, on Long Island. Hop Hog, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Hop Hog. Hop Hog. Yeah, I, I can't spell it, but I've been there. And, uh, and I asked the guy, he wanted an, an entire Texas crew, all uh, men from Texas, all in Western wear. He wanted, wanted us to wear uh, our boots, and, and we, didn't, we weren't wearing hats, but we were doing the boot thing. And I said, and so what is the purpose? <laughs> Some kind of a new uh, male dance troupe or something. <laughs> and uh, they said, no, we, just, we, we like the personality of the people from the South and, wow. and people from Texas. They just have the right attitude, and, and they don't come across with, with the, uh, the Eastern uh, accents and that kind of mannerisms. And uh-huh. They like the Southern charm, and we charmed them out of a lot of but, money <laughs> for real estate. You know, I, I was a boxer for many years, and I was pretty good. Yeah. Set records that won't yeah, – I, I, I think I've seen some pictures. Uh, but I loved getting up in front of ten and 12,000 people and – having them all clap for me because I know they were clapping for me. They were clapping for that other guy. They were pulling for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I thought, yeah. I thought they were. Well, well, hey. And that was that was my stage. I loved it when they said, when they raised my hand, said, this is the winner, you know. And so when I, I, I just transferred that to in front of the camera, and I've been able to transfer that to – just talking to people like you're talking about, you yeah. know. Uh, and I want to tell you, my mom and dad would be so proud of me, but they'd really be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> they'd say, "Where did that come from?" You mentioned Johnny Carson. Yeah. What? What? You know. It, there's conflicting stories about Johnny oh. Carson. I don't even know why I'm he going back to this. He was a conflicted person. Well, and, 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 I, and I did watch, you know, uh, I was a, always watching Johnny Carson. Of course, at night, that's what you did. We all watched The greatest Johnny Carson. of them all. There'll never be another. And I've been to the studio and uh, back, back when it was uh, the way it was and, mm-hmm. and uh, just a brilliant guy. But, man, had a personal life that was a mess oh gosh but a great drummer you yeah. know i mean buddy rich and him yep. were best friends yep. and and uh and he loved to do magic tricks he, he was a magician and he was pretty good at it yeah, yeah he was yeah now he was from was he from uh nebraska Some, somewhere in nebraska yeah i can't remember exactly yeah. but i just you know you were there during the golden era i think of hollywood um, I, I think it was pretty much the golden era too yeah. yeah, you were very yeah. fortunate. You're blessed. I, let me tell you how I met Johnny Carson. Okay, when I uh, the first let's see the first time I went out to see Mel Brooks, got on an airplane out here at Love Field, Braniff Airlines, yep. and that was back when you could get on an airplane that, that held 150 people. There might be 40 people on there. Mm-hmm. Guy got on with me, and he had uh, had a orange suit on and a white shirt and chains all around his neck he's and he's a white guy uh, <laughs> and, and on the, and we never said a word to each other till we got off the airplane we were waiting for our bags he said uh, uh we started talking he said what do you do i said uh, i'm a fireman he said what are you doing out here i said well i'm going to see a guy named mel brooks uh, about a picture and he said mel brooks 
I know Mel Brooks. He said, my name's uh, Do- uh, Bud Robinson. Bud, and Bud Robinson was Doc Severinsen's manager. Really? But, uh, Bud Robinson's office was right next door to uh, Johnny's. So we talked, and he took me over to the studio wow. because he lived three blocks from the studio. And he said, hey, why don't you come to the show tonight? I said, oh, okay. He said, well, I'll, I'll have tickets for you. If you want to bring somebody, but I didn't. I didn't know anybody. And went to the show that night, and Bob Hope was on the show. Met Bob Hope. Uh, and of course, I met Johnny, and, and Johnny liked me, you know. I know he did. Uh, uh, so, but you're likable, see. Uh, There's a lot of people that aren't likable. <laughs> and, and I've heard some stories about that, too. <laughs> I, but I love Johnny. You know, well, Johnny was Johnny. Uh, so that's where how I met him through Bud. And Doc, uh, and Doc was such we we lived in the same neighborhood, mm-hmm. uh, and and Doc's still going. Yeah, he's still going. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, uh, my business partner uh, Scott Swenson at the time. This has been probably, gosh, I don't know, ten years ago. Ten years ago, uh, we were doing an auction down in uh, San Miguel de Allende uh, for the for the poor children. It was for the Arts League. You know, about twenty percent of. San Miguel is expatriates from the United States. So they yeah. basically created an, an, an art community. Sure. And so we go down there to do this auction. And uh, so that, that night we landed, we went out just to have, you know, drinks and hang out. And we went in this little bit. I guarantee you that the, uh, the bar we were in probably wasn't any bigger than this whole studio right here. And there's Doc Severinsen playing. Really? With about 30 people in the room. <laughs> Doc Severinsen and all these young guys. He he always keeps young people around him now. Wow. And so uh, we thought that was pretty cool. And wow. then, and then, but then what was even cooler than that, the next night, he's our celebrity for our auction. <laughs> oh, really? So he, but he lives, he lives there. He lives, he lives there again. now? Yeah. Is yeah. That or he right? keeps a second home I there. I didn't know that. Yeah. But he looked oh. just like Doc Severinsen. Oh, is yeah. that right? Oh, well, there's only one Doc Severinsen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, and he was so good with, he was, he was good with people. Mm. A real, real good guy. You know, Johnny uh, could, uh, if, if you, if you didn't uh, get on his good side right now. Right. You never did get on it. <laughs> yeah. You know? He was, he was. Uh, he was uh, quick. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Well, first impressions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's great. Um, well, we've got a little bit of time left. Um, I, I guess what what would now? I know you love to play golf. Yeah, you're a golfer. Play a lot of golf. You've been playing a lot of golf, and your recall is tremendous. I mean, I find it amazing that you can you can kick out dates and years and and stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, think about it. Uh, everything we talked about, you pretty much have it chronological except for Bob's big boy. <laughs> don't, don't ask me where I played golf day before yesterday because I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I played the tribute. Yeah, I got it now. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're fighting the weather now. <laughs> yes, that's you know? right. And I know it's killing you, you that you're having to uh, stay on the cart path. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many, how many golf tournaments do you do, do you do a year? I do 70 to 73, something like wow. that. And, and they say, Man, that's a golf tournament and a half a week. But at this time of year, in the fall and in the spring, you know, I might do five a week. I'll always do three a week anyway, mm-hmm. four, four or five weeks. Uh, and then then I'm gone all over the country a lot. I just got back uh, six days ago from uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've had the two hurricanes there yeah. in the last month or so. They didn't get anything. They were about 100 miles out from— They just dodged the bullet? They dodged the bullet. And it was just perfect. Yeah. What's your favorite golf course? Oh, Pinehurst number three. But in Dallas, uh, probably uh, Dallas National. It's, it, it's, it's special. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know you, you attend a lot of charity events and things of that nature. Uh, you're kind of really, when you get down to it, you, other than the athletes that we have in, in Dallas, Fort Worth, you're, you're our celebrity, you know, and, and, and we're really proud. I mean, well, we really you. are. I, I, I get, 
I have to turn down about half, you know, because you can only, well, every now and then on a Monday, I'll play two of them. If it starts early in the morning, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and the oven starts at 1 o'clock, I'll play that tournament, get in my car, and head off and, and do another one somewhere. Now, you are you still living in Allen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You want my address, phone number? Yeah, I, I wouldn't give that. <laughs> I want it, but they can't have it. I think you're in my phone. <laughs> oh, so do you have anything that's going on? Are you are you working any, or are you just kind of doing I'm, whatever you want to do? I'm doing a, a lot of these uh, comic con mm-hmm. things all over the country. Really, uh, and that's and that's just play. But Is they pay fun? you a lot of money. Oh, oh, and they pay you a lot of money to do that. A lot of money, and. Big people come to them, you know that. Uh, big, that, yeah, the the big stars, the big guys, yeah, and and because of of blazing saddles, I'm I'm right there at the top with those guys because everybody wants to to get a picture, they want to talk about blazing saddles, and they want to uh, talk about Mel Brooks and all the other people. It's uh, so I do a lot of that. Uh, and of course, I do about fifty commercials a year. So, I think uh, the first time that you and I met, you wouldn't remember it because you meet so many people. But I did an auction. It was Ducks Unlimited. It was in Frisco. I do remember it. it was, Everybody in that place had a gun. <laughs> I, I swear, <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> and we were on the ice. I don't know if you remember that's that right. they put plywood down over the over the uh, Star Center. Right that's there. right. Yeah, and that's been. A, that's been quite a few years ago. And that was the first time I I ever did what I'm going to tell you about. Mm. I do this probably 20 times a year now at different events. Mm-hmm. I'll to raise money for whatever charity. I'll I'll, I'll say, "Hey folks, how would y'all like to see uh see me do the very first scene of Blazing Saddles, you know, uh, all the singing and dancing, all the lines and choreography and yes 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 well i'll be glad to do that but uh for the charity here it's going to cost each for each person two dollars and they'll say and i'll say yes 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 but i'll say uh and that's going to the charity but uh we don't make change if you just got a 20 dollar bill throw it out there that night we were i think we were in frisco Mm -hmm. somewhere Mm -hmm. and and I did it that night, and we pulled in about a thousand dollars. And uh, just off of that. And and gosh, since then, ooh, I made a, I've been a part of a making tidy some, amount. A tidy amount, yeah. Wow, that is very cool. Uh, other than uh, Slim and um, Alex, what? Uh, and I know we're running out of time, so I'm I'm kind of pushing it a little. Oh, bit. we we got we can do another couple of hours. We got it's hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> People around the world don't care. They don't care. No, and these guys have nothing to do. <laughs> hey, it's 7 o'clock in somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, so the bigger stars, Gene Wilder, um, uh, Cleavon Little, those guys. How, how was that working with those guys? I, I loved everybody on the show. Um, Gene, was, Gene is, was a very quiet guy. He had his nose in a book all the time, read a script, uh, but he was so helpful. He'd say, nobody would tell me what to do. They'd say, think about this, you know, mm-hmm. think about this. And everybody was helpful. Madeline Kahn, oh, there's a real story. When, you know, we did Paper, Paper Moon together. Yep. And when we finished, I finished on a, I was finishing on a Saturday night, she finished the night before. Friday night, and she had to get back to uh, uh, New York on a on a late night flight. She came across the um, the, ho- the hall at the hotel we were staying in, knocked on my door, and gave me a hug. And said it was sure nice working with you. Had a great time. She turned around, leaving, and she walked back. She said, "You and I are going to work together one of these days. I know it." I'm, I said, "I'm going back to the fire department." She says, "I don't care. You and I will work together one of these days." Four and a half months later, we're doing Blazing Saddles. Wow. And she had nothing to do with it. it uh, I mean, she, she just, just had intuitive. She, yeah. She just knew. Oh, yeah. She was a, 
She was a late blooming flower child. Well, you know? and, and yes. And, well, and she uh, we, she was fun. Oh god. And you know, um, young Frankenstein. She 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 made yes. Yeah, yeah, Frankenstein. <laughs> she, <laughs> she she was something. Oh god, and, and she was Mel Brooks' favorite actor or actress to ever work with. Mm-hmm. He just loved her. Oh, she was so good. So how now? How old is Mel now? Ninety two. Ninety-two. Yeah, wow. and if we if we call his office right now, yeah, he working. might even answer the phone. He will be in the office, I guarantee you. Wow! But uh, he might just answer the phone too. <laughs> Keeps him young. Keeps him young. <laughs> when he answers the phone, though, he'll say, "Hello," because somebody might say, "Is I'm trying to reach Mel Brooks." He'll say, "He's not here." <laughs> just hang up, you know. <laughs> but so he'll always just say, "Hello." You'll know if it's him or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, uh, we, we have a, a signature line that's uh, this particular show. So you want to give that line from Blazing Saddles? Oh, yes. I've, I've said this line a couple of times. Come on, boys. I don't hear no singing. <laughs> and then the rest of that would be, when you was little guys, you sang like birds. Now you're big guys. <laughs> How about a good old big guy work song? You know, something like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Don't know that one, huh? Well, what about the Camp Town Ladies? Oh, you know, the Camp Town Ladies sing this song. Da 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 da. There you go. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Burton Gilliam, it's been a pleasure and Man. an honor to yeah. have you with me. I hope we get to do it again sometime. We'll catch up down the road, and, uh, of course, we'll be seeing you around here in Dallas-Fort Worth and, and probably on a movie sometime when you decide to do some work. There you go. All right. Well, guys. Thank you for uh, having me. You bet. It's been fun. We've had a great time with Burton, and uh, uh, we, we, love, uh, we love good people. He's good people. So on behalf of everybody here in Dallas at Lincoln Center, Uh, The Mike McGavel Jones Show, we bid you adieu, and we'll see you next time. God bless.